good day church good day trust that your day has been amazing and that you're trusting god for uh an encounter today i want to thank pastor demi so um much i want to thank pastor demi from the depth of my heart for this opportunity to bring the word of god to god's own people to god's own people i'm super excited to be a part of the faith series and today i'll be looking at the topic elements of faith element of faith let us pray father we thank you we thank you lord jesus for the privilege to fellowship together we thank you precious father for the gift of life we thank you for how you've kept us and brought us to this moment precious father we ask that you speak to us in the few minutes we spend together and that our lives will be changed forever amen so we're looking at the elements of faith the element of faith what makes faith work what makes faith work those are the elements of faith number one is god is god how can we talk about faith and not talk about god i mean it's practically impossible it is god it is god Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 says but without faith is but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so if you're going to have any kind of relationship with God you must be a person of faith if you're going to have any kind of relationship before with God you must be a person of faith faith is activated when we are mindful of God faith is activated when we become mindful of god god is a spirit you can't pick up your phone to dial god's number you can't send him an email um you can't go and vis visit him at a physical um space you can only encounter him be with him in the realm of the spirit and that's why jesus said the father seeketh those that worship god in spirit and in truth in spirit and in truth it means that a new culture has been established for worship and that culture is the will of the spirit and it must be done in truth god is a spirit and those who must seek him or follow, must follow the spiritual path so like hebrews 11 6 we read without faith you cannot please god you must have that relationship with God for you to have faith. Man was created in the image of God, in the image and the likeness of God. And what that means is that we have the capacity to have faith. We were designed, faith, faith is not foreign to man. It is, it is religion that has made faith difficult. It is religion that has made it look like, oh, to have faith is hard. We exercise our faith every day. I'm sitting on this chair. It's faith that whoever chair, good job. You move into an apartment, you rent a room, an apartment, you lodge know, this that you're safe in that building. So we faith is not for us, but we just need to know God to activate that dimension of faith that connects with God. And knowing God is the easiest thing to do when you truly have a relationship with God. So you need God to have faith. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to inspire you. You need the Holy Spirit to breathe on the Word of God. You need the Holy Spirit to speak. The scripture says that faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. See, it's not just reading your Bible. It's hearing the inspiration that comes from the Word that, acti that activates faith. So there's no faith without God. There's no faith without God. J John 14 verse 6 says that Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only way. Your relationship with Jesus in itself is faith. And that faith is sufficient to access everything in God. You see, the key that opens the door is not as big as the door. It's never as big as the door. I haven't seen any door in real life, in movies, in books, that the key is as big as the door. It's not. The key is very small. The door is very big. But you see, as small as the key is, it will open a giant door. And that door gives you an access into a building. In that building, there are so many treasures. Your faith may be small. Your faith may be small. But you see that small faith? It can open giant doors. That small faith, it can do big things. 
do not despise your own faith scripture says you should not despise the days of little beginning little beginning includes your faith don't despise your faith you already believe something is possible you believe you can do something you believe something is attainable but you are afraid people will judge and say how far have you come how many scriptures have you read how long have you prayed that you want to attempt this thing it's a word for someone do not despise your faith that faith is sufficient to move the hand of god praise the lord and it reminds me of the story of the lepers in the book of Samir uh, in samaria in second kings chapter 7 who said to themselves you know what i don't they did not even have faith if you want to look at it but they moved by faith let's go and meet this people if the syrians spare us we will eat if they kill us we will die after all we are going to die in this city and then they got there and they saw abundance so do not despise your faith move if you have the faith then move in the direction of your faith say to someone move in the direction of your faith i want you to put it in the comment box declare i am moving in the direction of my faith number two is the word the word of god john 1 verse 1 to 3 john 1 verse 1 to 3 in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was anything made that was made so if you're going to create anything if you're going to see any reality if you're going to translate anything from the spiritual into the into the physical you must engage the word of god faith comes by what the word it comes by the word it comes by the word of god faith is powerful but you see, as powerful as faith is, you will not see it, you will not feel it, it will not come into your heart unless you expose yourself to the right words. There are so many of us who have negative faith. Why? We're engrossed in what the news is saying, what the doctors are saying. You know, every day there's something wrong with the food we eat. Don't eat too much carrot, too much vegetable, too much water, too much da 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 da. And that's what you're focusing on. So you're, you're, you're not, you're living like a prisoner. You must live by faith. And that means that you subject yourself to the word of God. You yield yourself to the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Isaiah 55 says that the word of God, that when he speaks his word, it will not return back to him void. It will, it will do that which he has sent it to do. He said as the dew falls from heaven and it cannot go back to heaven. It cannot, you can't see the dew going back like this. It must perform what it has been sent to do in the earth. So it's the word of God. The word of God is his power. It says where the word of the king is, there is power. The word of God is power. So if you say, I don't have faith, I don't have faith for this, I need faith for that. You need word, you need the word of God, you need to load yourself. The same way you charge your battery, your phone battery, charge your, your tablet, your smartphones, smart wristwatches. That's the same way you need to build up your spirit man with the word of God. With the word of God. You must sit with the scripture. And let me tell you something, reading the Bible is warfare don't wait till you feel like it don't think reading the bible is going to come to you if you only read the bible when you feel like it you are not reading your bible where i can predict how often you read your bible because the flesh is not the flesh will feel like sleeping eating seeing a movie hanging out with friends but reading the bible the flesh is not going to feel like it you have to stay insist that this is a protocol for heaven there's a protocol for manifesting god in the earth and i must observe it i must observe it sometimes i want to read my bible you know have you ever picked up your bible and you find that you've read the same verse one verse five times seven times one verse and you know that oh there's there's markets going on in my there's sales going on in my in my head and then i turn on my audio bible so that my mind is engrossed in what i am doing it's warfare some people want to read their Bible. You carry your Bible, you want to read it. And then you sit down in front of your TV. Your family members are watching Netflix. Your friends are chilling with Netflix. And then you sit with them and with your Bible, you say you want to read your Bible. I mean, that's a set up not to read your Bible. 
the same way we have to we do certain things to move our bodies to comply when we need to study for professional exams study for promotional exams it's the same way you don't want to you can't say you're studying for your exams and then you're doing it with friends who are just in who are seeing a movie who are shopping you go to a secluded place where you can focus where your mind can build focus it's the same method for studying your bible you have to you have to make yourself read the bible sometimes you have to read it out loud sometimes you have to read it as you're pacing up and down your room sometimes you have to go on the walk and turn on your audio bible sometimes you have to go outside because the word of god is important without the word of god we are weak without the word of god we are naked without the word of god we are insufficient without the word we are insufficient the entire world we see today was created by the word of god the entire world there's nothing you want to access in god today that you would access without the word of god absolutely nothing you must find it in the word you must find the promise that deliver that delivers your reality you must find the promise that delivers your reality praise the lord praise the living jesus secondly is your own word your own word it's not enough to read the scriptures to declare the word in the morning oh god supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory i am above and not beneath the part of the just is like a shining light it shines brighter and brighter then when you're done say ah the way the world is going i don't even know where only god knows tomorrow ah this life is not sure for anybody did you hear about how that man died after everything he did anybody can die anytime hello anybody cannot die anytime. i cannot die anytime it's not my lot. i'm not saying whoever died deserves to die that way but i'm not going to confess something negative that's not the promise of god the promise of god to me is that with long life will he satisfy me so god is going to satisfy me with what long life your words must align with god because guess what the power of life and death is in your tongue the power of life and death is in the tongue what you say can negate what god has said did you hear me what you say can negate what god has said in your own life you won't see the manifestation so it's important that our words agree with god and that power is in the tongue of every believer is in the tongue of every believer is in the tongue of every man sorry not every believer it says death and life proverbs 18 21 are in the tongue is in the tongue of the believer alone is in the tongue of the anointed alone it is in the tongue of every man the power to give life the power to kill is in every man's tongue what we have as believers that unbelievers do not have is authority is authority so that power is there be mindful of what you say be mindful of your jokes it's amazing how people joke with things like you're stupid <laughs> mm -hmm. no because if you say that you that person is going to be really stupid Oh, you're so dumb you're so dumb no please don't joke with your words don't joke with it your words must agree you must put the word of god in your mouth and you see scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks if you've not filled your heart with the word of god the word of god cannot be in your mouth if the word of god is scarce in your heart the word of God cannot be in your mouth. How exactly do you want to do the things that God has called you to do at this time? How can you fulfill your mandate? How can you fulfill your purpose? How can you keep your marriage waxing strong? How can you raise godly children, healthy children? How can you continue to increase and abound in your finances if you lack the word of God and if you're constantly speaking the language of this world? It's no wonder many people go to church. They go to church Sundays, every Sunday. Some people go twice a week, three times a week. You know, you attend physically, you're in the different virtual meetings. You're from one prayer meeting to another, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yet they are weak and their life lacks results. Why? Because after they have prayed, they go and sabotage the seeds of their prayers with the wrong confession. With the wrong confession. In the faith realm, your words must align. It must align. Look at that woman. She said, her husband said, is everything? She said, all is well. She went to meet Elijah and said, you know what? 
I did not ask you for anything. You gave me this. You prayed for me to have this child. So this child must come back to life. But until her circumstances changed, she did not sometimes be realistic. No, your reality is not what you can see physically. What you can see in this realm is subject to change. What you can see in this realm is subject to change. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And you must use that life to nourish everything that God has given to you. To nourish everything. Scripture says out of your belly flows rivers of living water. That water flows, your, the real belly is your mouth. Rivers must flow out of your mouth. Your words must be seasoned with salt. These are the things, and these same words that flow out of your mouth will nourish your spirit, man. You know you hear the things that you say. You do. You hear the things that you say. So say the things that you need to hear. Don't say what you feel. Don't say how you feel. Yes, sometimes you wake up, and you would not wake up on the right side of the bed. If you don't wake up on the right side of the bed, when you wake up, go to the right side of the bed. If you don't wake up feeling good, get yourself feeling good. Remind yourself of the faithfulness of God. So what I'm saying is that your words must always align with God. That's what it means to make him your Lord. Your words must align with God. You must be subject to what God is saying. No matter what your spouse has done, no matter what your boss is doing to you, no matter how business is going, no matter what your child is doing, if you're going to walk in faith and be a man or a woman of faith, you must speak. You must be dogged about it. Dogged and almost senseless. You don't have to, it doesn't have to make sense for you to say it. The word of God does not need to make sense to you. It must only make faith, make glory and give, deliver results. Doesn't have to make sense. The love of the, the word of God. Second Kings chapter 7. Elisha came and said, this time tomorrow, the siege in Samaria would have come to an end and there will be abundance. Oh, the man by the right hand of the king said, even if God were to open the windows of heaven, imagine the audacity. And Elisha said, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. You will see it, but your mouth will not eat it. Many of us have seen things in the realm of the spirit. Many of us, things have been revealed to us. Visions, instructions have been given to us. Dreams, inspirations have been given to us. Business ideas, results that can change the entire world have been given to us. Sermons that will change lives have been given to us. But after we see, say, me, oh, you start, you know, sometimes it's even the strategic meeting you're having with your friends. Say, you know, this is a brilliant idea. It's a brilliant idea. This, all of them say, yes, yes, it's a brilliant Say, but looking at where we are right now, we cannot do it. You know, that's what the 10 spies said. You know, out of the 12 spies, I went to check out Jericho. Looking at where we are now right now, we cannot do it. You know, we are still small, but projectively, looking into the future in the next five years, <laughs> God is speaking. You are looking at time. God is speaking to you. You are looking at time. Eternity dropped in your heart, and then you want to, you want time to deliver eternity that has been given to you. I might say that there's no room for baby steps. There is. But you step out with a mind to take giant steps. And then let the Holy Spirit help you with the rest. So the word of God must be in your mouth also. Number three is the love of God. The reason many of us do not have faith is because we are not sure God loves us. You know, we believe that there are some people that are important. You know, like somebody like that, you now, he is very, very important to God. People like us, you know, we are not important. Somebody like Bishop Oedekwe, he is very, very important to God. Kenneth Copeland, he is very, very important to God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There's no partiality in God. He's not man. He's not you and I. There's no partiality in God. Mba is not there. There's no partiality in God. God loves, he, he, that's why he's God. His ways are beyond our ways. God loves every man. He loves every one of us equally. Yes. He does not love Jesus more than he loves you. Mm -mm. He loves every one of us equally. God loves every one of us. He loves us what? Equally. God loves every one of us equally. He loves us all utterly. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross was not shed in a greater measure for some people. It is that same blood 
that has cleansed people who lived the first 100, 150 years ago, that is still alive today and will work for generations coming behind us. So, yeah, but God favored this person more than me. You see, let me tell you something. The favor of God is not to establish the partiality of God. The favor of God is to establish the possibility of God. You know, our Father and the Lord, Pastor Yadibu, will often say that God is a mathematician. And if you know mathematics, I don't, mathematics is not my strong subject. I mean, I avoided it. There are some subjects, topics I like in mathematics, but generally speaking. But one thing is consistent in mathematics. It's full of examples. It's full of examples. They would cite examples, examples, and then tell you, study the example and use it to solve these um, sums. It's full of, God is the same way. When God shows great favor to a, pers to a person, is simply highlighting the possibilities available in that person to a people. He's not saying, oh, this is my son, no. All of you, you know, this one is well behaved. So this is the one that I'm going to bless. The rest of you, I will not bless you. You, I will not give you that thing you're looking for. He's not man. He's not man. He's not a man that they should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he needs to repent. There's no partiality in God. He's not a respecter of man. He's not. And whatever you sow is what you reap. If anybody is enjoying a certain dimension of favor, best believe that they have prayed. If they have not prayed, somebody has prayed. Or God found them worthy to steward this favor on their lives. Many of us can preach. Oh. We can preach and say, if you talk about healing, we can quote scriptures on healing. If you talk about provision, but we don't believe it's possible for us. Why? Because we don't know that God is committed to us. Do I know Barack Obama? Yes, I do. Like, as a, as a public figure. Do I know Oprah Winfrey? Yeah, I've read a lot about her, seen videos, I've seen all the beautiful things. I know she's a great giver. Do I believe that if I write to Oprah Winfrey today, and she reads my email, she would respond to me immediately. No. Why? Because she does not have a relationship with me. I don't exist, exist in her world. But guess what? You have a relationship with God. You exist in God's world. That's why many times we pray, 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 and we are not sure. There is no conviction in our heart. It is a 50-50 if God answers, if he does not answer. So you're already making alternative arrangements and alternative plans because you already assume that... You know, if he wills, he may, he may not. That's not the mind of God. If, it's in, if, you find, if you find it in the word of God, and you believe it's in the word of God, and you continue to declare it, it is your will. It is your caution. It is the desire of heaven for you. It's the desire. If there's any man or woman that you're seeing who is walking in a certain dimension, whether maritally, financially, spiritually, in ministry, in whatever way, that dimension is available to everyone that will believe. Jesus said, if you will say to the mountain, if you will say to the mountain, problem is we are not saying to the mountain. We are talking about the mountain. We are discussing the mountain. We are eulogizing the mountain. We are not saying to the mountain. You are loved by God. Galatians 5 verse 6, Galatians 5 verse 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith is propelled by love. Anyone that is not rooted in love and is trying to exercise faith, they may get away with it for a while, but they are going to come to the point where fear will grip them very well. I'm telling you. It is the love of God. So God loves me. He saved me. Remember oh, how he answered me when I prayed for five dollars. How he answered me when I prayed for five dollars. How he answered me when I prayed. Then you put all of that together. Fellowshipping with the word of God. Seeing the commitment of God to his word, to his people. And then he inspires love in your heart. And that love causes you to believe. You know, children are amazing. When children know that a person loves them, oh, they will milk it. They will milk it. When their favorite auntie or favorite uncle is around, everything they've asked their parents and their parents deny them. They're going to ask their uncle, ask their aunties, ask their grandma, grandpas. Can you buy me a bicycle? Can I have ice cream? Can I have chocolate? Can I have this? Why? Because they know this person cares about me. That's why I can ask for anything. You know, children are so audacious in their faith. It's amazing. 
you can scold your child in the morning they go to school when they come back in the afternoon the moment you open the door they're telling you why did you make that lunch for me i don't like that food you put in my lunch box their faith is audacious some of us even after god has forgiven us and we have confessed our sins it takes us like a week before we can even talk to god much less ask for anything and you think you are you are pleasing god no you are not oh you are not a scripture says we must approach the throne of grace with boldness we must come with boldness we are children of the of the most high we are not servants we are not strangers you are loved first john 4 verse 9 to 10 first john chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 in this was manifested the love of god towards us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him hearing his love not that we loved god but he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins if he gave us his son please what will he withhold from us if he gave us his only begotten son he could have wiped us out and go and create another says romans 5 8 says why were yet sinners christ loved us and gave himself for us when you were still in sin and you did not know God, you were in rebellion, you hated God, he died for you. You must meditate on the love of God. It must blow your mind. You must get to a place where your, your confidence is even annoying some people. Your confidence is audacious. Why? Because you are rooted in the love of God. You know there is nothing you have lost that that love cannot restore. There is nothing you need in life that that love cannot give to you. You must be rooted in the love of God and know that you are backed by heaven. That's how faith is activated. That's how faith is activated. And lastly, we must be a people of praise. You must be a people of praise. Praise God. Don't praise your circumstances. You know, even when your circumstances are good, don't dwell on it too much. Because if you dwell on it too much, it becomes an idol. You don't want to leave it. You are afraid that there, is, there are no new uh, possibilities or greater possibilities available in the future. Let the praise of God be, 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 be so much, be abundant in your life. In your conversations in your decision making in how you respond to adversity let the praise of god be rich let it be abundant let it be rich my favorite scripture when it comes to thanksgiving psalm 67 verse 5 and 6 psalm 67 verse 5 and 6 let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee then shall the earth yield that increase and god even our god shall bless us when we praise god not only the earth yields our increase everything increases your faith will increase you cannot praise god worship god sincerely with the whole of your heart and your, you will not be bubbling with faith You'll be bubbling with faith. You'll feel like getting in the ring with the devil and giving him several punches and knocking him down. You see, you must be a person of thanksgiving. You don't need an occasion to praise God. Every day is an opportunity to praise God. Turn on your praise list. Turn, your, uh, turn on your Bluetooth speaker. While you're driving in the car, increase the volume of your radio. I mean, praise God. Sing at the top of your voice when you're in the bathroom, you're in the kitchen at all times. Don't sing in your workplace. So you can just, you know, meditate and say it out. When your workplace, you're not permitted. You can't disturb other people. Praise God. In Matthew 14 verse 15 to 17 matthew 14 verse 15 to 17 jesus was teaching the multitudes they had been there all day they were tired and hungry the disciples were like let's tell these people to go so that they can go and find something to eat and jesus was like okay do we have something we can give them? said, well we don't have anything but we found a boy a little boy with five loaves and two fish jesus said and but philip said what is this among so much like how many people can five loaves and two fish feed jesus said give it to me they gave it to jesus what did you do he gave thanks and then he began to share he gave thanks praise will push you into dimensions you never thought that you could enter into praise praise will deliver ideas to you will open you up to a higher intelligence that your certificate and your your certificate and your educational background cannot defend you don't understand you cannot use your certificates you cannot use your educational background to defend the level of intelligence that has been delivered to you by heaven because it comes from god when praises go up blessings come down and you see those blessings they come with the presence of god when you praise god you activate scripture says that god is omnipresent he's everywhere but you guess what his presence is not manifested everywhere 
in the bar parlor, in the clubs, is there. Oh, you can see what's happening. But his presence will not manifest there. But when the praise of God is released, the presence of God will manifest. Solomon praised God. God had to visit him. He went back on three days of praises. No request. Four days, seven days of praises. No request. Let's see if depression can still stand. You're depending on antidepressants, depending on medications. You try the praise of God. Go on a fast and try the praise of God. Or with your antidepressant, take it and dedicate your day. 10 hours a day to praising God. You will see that you wake up one day, you won't take the antidepressant, you'll be very okay. And you, will, you won't realize until it's the third day that you have not taken your medication. So these are the elements of faith. God, a relationship with God, is word, the words that we speak, is love for us, not our love for God, the love of God for us and our praises. And I know that as we put these things into practice, we would increase in faith and begin to do great exploit. I pray that the word that has come to you today will benefit you. It will change your life forever. I pray for that person who is struggling, struggling to believe God. You know you should have faith. You want to have faith. But you've gotten to the point where it's just hard. You feel detached from God. The Lord says that I want to carry you. I ask and I pray over you that you yield yourself to God, that you surrender yourself to God. He will find his way to you. You are a lost sheep and it's the responsibility of the shepherd to find you. And God says, I am coming after you. I will pick you up and bring you back to the place of restoration. To that person who has had faith, who has believed God and is still believing God, but is yet to see the result. I pray for you that you will hold on, that you will not be weary in well-doing. Because your clouds are loading and very soon it will pour. And when it pours, it's going to pour heavily. It's going to be back from back to back. Before you can, you, you've gotten over one celebration, you've testified over one blessing, another one has happened. You will not give up. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You will not be full of envy. You will not become bitter in the name of Jesus. And to the leaders of this church, I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you. That Yahweh himself would expand the, 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 the boundaries of this, of this ministry. That God will expand the boundaries of this ministry and multiply your influence in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super grateful. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Dami, once again.